A literal fire tornado occurred the other day in Los Angeles County, California. Check out this incredible video of the fiery whirlwind as several other large fires are still burning across California, some of them being 0% contained with over 14,000 acres burned as of filming this. This is a pretty accurate depiction of the overall weather pattern going forward because we have a whirlwind of changes on the way. A dramatic cooldown in the northeast is going to give us an early taste of fall. Severe storms with tornadic potential are going to make a return and, as I've been saying for over a month now, our quiet tropical season is about to light up. But for now, let's relax a little bit and talk about this cold front moving through the eastern portion of the U.S. This is the same cold front that's been responsible for all the flooding and severe weather in recent days across the Ohio Valley and Appalachians. And it's finally picking up steam and moving to the south, allowing for more comfortable and stable air to settle in behind it. Just look at these low temperatures from tonight into tomorrow morning. You see all the blue over there in the Ohio Valley into the northeast? Those are 50. 240 degree temperatures up here and the temperature isn't going to recover much during the day. It's not going to get back up in the 90s. We are talking about some downright cool weather compared to what we have been seeing over here. And this trend continues on for several days. Look, even as we get all the way back here into Saturday, August 20th, it's a little bit warmer, but we still have those low temperatures, especially along the Appalachians there. And then we do see the resurgence of some of that warmer air over here in the central and western U.S. If we put all this together and look at a 10-day temperature anomaly, you can see that everybody in the blue is going to be below average and everybody in the red is going to be above average. We are kind of significantly below average over here in the mid-Atlantic regions as that cold front really settles in that cooler air right over Maryland and northern portions of Virginia. But you're going to feel the effects all the way back up into Wisconsin and as far south as into Florida as well. However, there's a little bit of a heat wave going on over here in the Pacific Northwest up into portions of Montana and then even into Saskatchewan and Alberta. And then, of course, we're still hot and toasty across the central U.S. I don't know when that's going to change. But I want you to notice something right here. You see this boundary between the warmer air mass and the cooler air mass along the Missouri, Mississippi, and Ohio River valleys here? This is an area where I expect if we flip over to the precipitation anomaly, we're going to see increased precipitation. Bada bing, bada boom, okay? I was almost right. <laughs> it's displaced off to the west a little bit, but you can see that there's actually going to be quite significant above average average rainfall in this area because that boundary has sat up there. And this is going to happen in waves of storms that follow the tail end of that cold front and suck in energy from the west as we go forward. And as we take a look at where lightning strikes can occur, we can see that this actually starts today. Look, we've got thunderstorms up here in Illinois and Wisconsin associated with that boundary, and they are going to slide to the south and to the southeast. Now, these storms today are not going to be very strong, but they do have an interesting attribute about them that I do think we should talk about about. If we switch over to the North American model at three kilometers, you can see this system very clearly swirling around here over Wisconsin by around 3 p.m. today. But notice on the lower right-hand quadrant, we have increased lower level jet stream winds. We usually call that nadir juice here because when in combination with other factors, this kind of activity can lead to enough wind shear to produce tornadoes. Watch here as we get into about 3 or 4 p.m. today, there's going to be a nose of CAPE, convective available potential energy. And that's where all those storms are going to be sucking the energy out of the west like I talked about before and at this point we could see some storms that cause some problems over here now it's a very small threat the storm prediction center only has a marginal outlook if storms do get their act together today it's going to start around 4 or 5 p.m. eastern and then kind of congeal into a line of storms around 8 p.m. Uh, which at this point there could still be some isolated spinny boys but for the most part we're talking about some really weak general garden variety thunderstorms here that could cause some isolated wind gusts and some heavy rain and speaking of heavy rain look at even further into the future, you can see that that's going to slide down into the lower Ohio Valley, into the Appalachian region on Sunday. Here we are at 2 p.m. Some of those storms will make it down here, but the spin and the tornadic potential goes down a lot. Thankfully, it does look like it's going to skedaddle pretty quick, and we don't have to worry too much about the flash flooding potential, but certainly uh, there's enough moisture over here to potentially cause some of those creeks and streams to rise again. Look at that monsoon over there, son. You see all this moisture over here in the Four Corners region. How long have we been talking about this? I don't know if you guys know this or not, but this has been the wettest monsoon season on record for a lot of these areas, and there's no end in sight. Still going to be below average temperatures and above average precipitation as we go forward. Big time, showers and thunderstorms are going to be possible in Utah, Colorado, New Mexico, and Arizona on Monday, August 15th. And watch how that energy kind of purposefully misses Texas and goes right up into Nebraska and produces more thunderstorms down between our boundary here. So that's going to be possible in Missouri on Tuesday, and then that's going to sink down down 
to the south ever so slowly causing some more thunderstorms down in the deep south and as I push this even farther into the future you can see that we're gonna be stuck in this pattern for a while we've got a dip in the jet stream over here making way for a big ridge and some warm air on the west coast some cool air in this portion and then everyone in between over here is going to be dealing with the rain except for north central Texas it looks like <laughs> But even that changes a little bit as we get into Monday, August 22nd. Look at that. Rain is on the way eventually. I promise you guys. But look at that big old Gulf of Mexico. It's quiet, man. I mean, there's not really much going on down there. August 22nd, Ryan, I thought you said we was going to have a massive hurricane season. Well, so far, this has been one of the least active tropical seasons in recent years. This very well could be, and I hope it continues to be the case, but I think it's important to remind ourselves that we're still at the beginning of tropical tropical season and just because something has been one way doesn't mean that it's always going to continue to be that way I don't think anybody along the coast should be letting their guards down in fact if for whatever reason you don't want to take my word for it dr. Rick Nab from the weather channel had this to say on Twitter the other day five of the strongest Atlantic hurricanes on record by wind are hurricane Allen in 1980 and hurricanes Dorian Wilma Gilbert and the Labor Day hurricane of 1935 in all of those years the number of storms by today's day was fewer than so far this year except for 2005 history teaches buckle up now some might say buckle up is a little strong and I might agree with you there but it doesn't really matter what metaphor you use the fact of the matter is, is that you should start preparing now before any storms are on the radar especially if you live in a hurricane prone zone one of the reasons this season has been so inactive so far is because of all of this dust over the main development region this has led to a lot of suppression of thunderstorms out here leading to decreased activity Activity. This dust is reaching the Gulf of Mexico, however, it's certainly less potent over here and therefore has less of an effect on development. In fact, we're seeing something develop right now in the Gulf of Mexico as we speak. A weak surface disturbance is creating an area of disorganized showers and thunderstorms off the coast of Texas and Louisiana. Additionally, a mid-level thermal low developing from the continued latent heat release from these storms is producing some vorticity that could aid in spinning up a tropical system if the storms stay over the Gulf of Mexico long enough to put that into English terms for you this spinny boy right here is gonna keep spinning all right and if he spins over water longer it's gonna get more wet on land but if he starts spinning over land sooner it's gonna be less wet on land does that make any sense to anybody else the center of circulation is somewhere right in here okay and the longer that can stay over those warm Gulf of Mexico waters the more likely it is that this is actually gonna turn into something that we have to watch now I don't think we're in for a hurricane or anything like that over here but maybe a tropical depression or a tropical storm bringing lots of much needed rain into southern portions of Texas and according to the euro model over the next 90 hours you are going to get it but once again it's suppressed way down south into southern Texas looks like Dallas might be lucky to get a drop of rain out of this system but still two to three inches down here the further south you go but I think that once again if that storm spins a little bit longer over the Gulf of Mexico it could intensify enough to bring these totals up and a little bit further to the north if we're lucky so as you can see as long as as that dust clears up long enough for some storms to form in these anomalously warm waters the tropics are going to flip on like a switch once again I'm not saying this to scare you I really believe it I know a lot of EMA offices businesses and just regular everyday people watch this channel and I want to do everything I can to make sure that you get what you're coming for whenever you come to my channel you want to be hyper weather aware you want to know more about this stuff than the average person so I'm just giving you my inside advice my inside inside analysis on what's going on down here and speaking of being hyper weather aware I am excited to share with you our really awesome sponsor for today cyclone port the best weather surveillance solution are you or someone you know involved in emergency management utility work media or commercial and residential development well you need a weather surveillance network and thanks to radar Omega and cyclone port it's never been easier to set one up with live HD remote control pan tilt zoom cameras rapidly updating weather sensors sensors and easily accessible archives, Cyclone Port can make any office, home, or command center the most weather-ready entity you could possibly imagine. Cyclone Port has already helped several EMAs with their weather surveillance and is currently in the process of expanding their network through larger areas. The best part is anybody with the Radar Omega app can view these sites if you so choose, so if you're curious about what it looks like, go in the app and check it out. I personally believe this is the future. Every emergency command center, every hospital, 
Every fire department, police station, school, every community should be looking into this. And if you make your data public on the app, it helps me with my live coverage of severe weather here on YouTube. So head on over to cycloneport.com. I've got a link in the description. They know way more about this stuff than me and you can talk to somebody over there about what to do next. I promise you, your community is gonna be thankful for this investment. Now, let's get back into the video. That's pretty much all I got for you today forecast wise, but wait, before you go, I gotta ask you a question, okay? We're getting ready to get into covering these hurricanes and tropical storms live on the air here on YouTube for free. Make sure you subscribe and get ready for that, but I'm interested in what you guys look for in those types of broadcasts. You guys know what we already do. We're gonna have a bunch of storm chasers on the ground. We're gonna be communicating with them. We're gonna have live radar analysis. We're gonna have news. We're gonna have Andy and our meteorologist helping me out. But is there anything else specific that you would like to see in our hurricane coverage this year? Please let me know down in the comments below. We're gonna do everything we can to make sure that we're providing the best coverage that we possibly can right here on YouTube for you. I, I hope we don't get any big bad hurricanes, but to be honest, I am excited to go live again. I don't know how long it's been since we've done a live stream. So go ahead and leave a comment. I will be reading all of them, I promise. Hey you, the person that just watched all of my video, do you not follow me on Twitter? If so, that is a tragedy. We're pretty close to 100,000 followers on Twitter right now, and if we get there, a little birdie told me that I'm gonna be able to get verified. Having that little check mark next to my name means a lot, and it allows me to contact people that are necessary to be contacted in a much easier fashion. So go follow me on Twitter. I post good stuff on there anyways, okay? All right, I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. <laughs>